there is an unbelievable amount of irony here, uh, given I am surrounded, like quite literally surrounded by uh, this monument to my sins that I have built. I'm surrounded by it. And all of these shoes, all of these naughty, I'm a bad boy purchases that I've made throughout my adult life. <laughs> well, here they are. I'm staring right at them. And here I am about to talk to random people on the internet about how much is too much. How many shoes are too many shoes? Um, and look, I, I get it. Someone's probably writing in the comments right now, like, how could this man with all of these pearls? Like, I, I, yes, okay, I understand. Um, and, you know, this isn't me lecturing anyone or trying to, like, stand on a pedestal or anything. Like, I understand that there's a weird level of hypocrisy here. Uh, but I feel like having made the financial decisions that I have made and purchased the amount of shoes that I have. And, you know, these aren't just like going to DSW and buying a pair of Cole Haan shoes. Like, these are, you know, there, there's a there's a couple thousand... There's a couple thousands and thousands of dollars worth of shoes here. And this is not a brag. This absolutely is not me bragging. Um, nor is it a weird justification for the purchases that I've made. Um, you know, I recognize that I don't have healthy coping mechanisms. Uh, sometimes I sit on the couch, eat a pint of ice cream, and watch the episode of Aqua Teen Hunger Force where Carl finds a wig and turns into a clown. Uh, other times I might buy a pair of pants. Other times I might buy a pair of shoes. I don't know. Look, I get it. This is a weird video coming for me. But I think at the end of the day, what I'm really trying to explain and talk about here and at least share some knowledge is, you know, if you're trying to build um, a collection of well-made footwear and try to, you know, truly buy fewer, better things, you know, how, how do you do that? Where do you start? What suggestions might I be able to provide for someone who is trying to really, truly buy fewer better things um you know and i've brought up brands that i like in the past but i've never really spoken about like styles right like this is a, one of those videos that's like different strokes for different folks but if i had to pick out of you know how many shoes are too many shoes and like if i had to pick call it eight i'm gonna set a line here eight pairs of shoes that I am planning on wearing, in theory, for the rest of my life, whatever it is, or at least for a long time, you know, 20, 30 years in some cases, these shoes will last, maybe even longer, uh, you know, with proper care, what would I suggest? So that's where we're going to start. Um, and I, I'm also going to throw in there that, you know, I'm not talking about running shoes. I, if you work, say, on like a construction site, or where like OSHA's involved, you know, uh, any footwear that's purely meant for like, like, being a tool, if that makes sense. Like, a pair of shoes that will, um, I don't know, like, protect your feet from, like, falling cinder blocks or something. Um, oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> Sorry, Moose just showed up. You know, this video is, is just, all of that stuff's out of the way. No sneakers, no work boots, like, work boots. Just, like nice pairs of footwear that you can wear in your everyday life. Um, and I really think that like eight pairs of shoes, it's enough. That's, that's a lot of, sh I mean, that's like in the grand scheme of things like that's, those are a lot of pairs of shoes, um, for like one person, right? It's not a ton, but like eight pairs of shoes. That's a healthy number. I think granted I've got more than 50 pairs of shoes and that is entirely too much. So, if I were talking to someone about building a wardrobe, building a like sustainably curated wardrobe, whatever you want to call it, however you want to word it, like what would I do? I think I would look at that person's life and if they fell into that category of like, they are a pretty normal person, right? Like sometimes they drive, sometimes they walk uh, somewhere, like let's say they're living in a suburban or urban environment where, you know, they might go to a coffee shop, they might put on a silly little outfit and take Instagram photos or something like that. Um, what might I suggest? I am looking at my animals right now. Moose, are you coming in here? <laughs> are you going to come say hi? Oh my God. What? What? 
Do you want to come in? <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Uh, back, back to our regularly scheduled uh, whatever I'm talking about. All right. Eight pairs of shoes. Let's start with... A pair of loafers. Now, not necessarily a pair of penny loafers, but mostly a pair of loafers in the philosophy, in the philosophical sense of a pair of loafers. This is a shoe that you can dress up or down that you can just put on. You can slip this shoe on and you don't have to worry about it. My first shoe like suggestion for anybody is a pair of shoes that you can slip on that you don't really have to worry about in a material that is really easy to wear. You know, if I have to go out for dinner and it's raining, I don't mind wearing these because this is made out of chamois. These are a pair of Aldens in, you know, it's like a brown, I think it's tobacco chamois. And they're just, they are so easy to wear. Um, the leather is oily. The leather is like really kind of like fatty and greasy and it like conditions itself. Um, and they're just really easy. So my first shoe collection is a philosophical loafer or a loafer, um, but a shoe that you can slip on that will look good with a lot of different things. So, uh, you know, I could wear these with trousers. I could wear these with jeans. I could wear these with shorts um, and they'd look good. So like a versatile, a versatile color and a versatile material of a shoe that you can just slip on. That is my first suggestion for shoe number one. Shoe number two I would take that same philosophy, but I'd apply it to something that's a little bit more inclement weather. So this exact shoe might not be a great example, but philosophically, I think it covers all of the bases of the second piece of footwear that I would suggest, which is a boot that you can just slip on. Uh, but really a boot for more inclement weather. So, you know, a boot with leather, a leather upper, but not leather soles, but like a rubber sole, right? Like this shoe has one pretty chunky rubber outsole and you know the upper isn't super hard wearing but philosophically like if I have to go out for dinner or if I'm meeting someone and I don't have a lot of time I don't want to worry about something like a versatile comfortable shoe or boot in this case that I can just slip on um and I'll throw some suggestions in the comments here but you know for number one uh just like a shoe like something that uh, like hits the ankle um that you can just slip on my second suggestion is a boot that really follows the same thing. We're like, if I just had these two things, you know, I could wear this in the winter time. I could wear the other one in the summertime, whatever it was. Um, that's my second suggestion is, you know, my inclement weather, I just have to slip these on. So now I have a shoe, a loafer, and I have a boot. My third suggestion, I should guess I should take a step back before I grab the shoe. Um, a lot of people say, like, you need a black cap toe Oxford in case you ever have to go to a funeral, in case... Nah, 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 nah. I don't think I necessarily agree with that. And it's not that I think you shouldn't have a black cap toe Oxford. I have a black cap toe Oxford or a pair of them that I love, and I wear them when the occasion requires it. But the pair of shoes that I wear more frequently than that black cap toe Oxford fills the same niche and that is covered by a what i guess i would call a black presenting cap toe oxford um these are in oxblood and the nice thing about them is that if i wore these indoors where the light wasn't super harsh someone would look at this and go that is a black shoe but if i wore these where the light was a little bit more like direct there's some more stuff going on here and this museum oxblood pair of oxfords um, kind of fills that niche of like, I will wear these to a funeral because no one's going to look at this and go, that's not a black shoe. No one's going to look at my shoes for long enough to think that, but I can wear this with a number of different things just because it's not actually black. It's dark, but it has like rich burgundy tones and it's a really easy, stylish, formal pair of shoes that I think fits the bill better than a pair of black cap toe Oxfords. Um, so my third suggestion is a very formal shoe like this in Oxford, not necessarily in black, um, because it's close enough, but it's also a little bit more versatile than black. So my third suggestion is a really formal shoe that you can wear, um, that isn't black, but it's pretty close. So now we have like 
the weather resistant and easy to wear slip on shoe and boot and a formal shoe. My next two suggestions, I, I guess philosophically again, like are pretty interchangeable. And my suggestion would be, I dropped it. <laughs> Just grab the other one. Okay. So my suggestion would be to have one plain toe blucher and one derby. Um, or two derbies and that's fine. Or two bluchers and that's fine. Really the big difference here is where your like lacing channel begins. On a derby, your lacing channel begins at the heel on a blucher, your lacing channel is like, it's separate. It's a separate pattern piece, basically. And it just, here it is. Um, and that's, that's really about it is in terms of formality, they kind of hit the same like niche. Um, but I would suggest getting a derby or a blucher or a derby and a blucher in different easy to wear colors. Now, you know, this is a unique pair and this is a pretty unique pair because this is effectively like white or like taupe suede and then this has a lot of texture and a lot of like variation in color and stuff like that so you know i own these because i have no need in my wardrobe but i'm gonna throw in some pictures and i'll throw in some suggestions in uh the description below just for people who are like you know if i were to pick one derby and if i were to pick one blucher what would i pick um, and I think both of the suggestions that I would throw out there for people who are looking for their first pair of shoes or first like collection of shoes, um, I'm probably just going to throw some Grant Stones in there because again, I, I think Grant Stones are an excellent, excellent value, uh, like brand. Um, but the quality is there. I mean, these are Grant Stones and I love them. These, these are Grant Stones. So my next two suggestions to bring us up to five would be a pair of derbies that are easy to wear, not black, or if they are black, black with a lot of texture. Um, and then a player of like plain toe bluchers. Again, not black or black with a lot of texture. Like none of these suggestions that I'm making, ignore the color here, are black shoes. Um, because black shoes, to be honest with you, can be a little challenging to like wear compared to other things. It's not that they're hard to wear. It's that I think that for stylish options, um, you can you can do better. So right now we're at five shoes. We have a blucher, we have a derby, we have an Oxford that isn't black, but is almost black. We have a slip on boot and then a slip on shoe. So that leaves a hole for three, if we're sticking to the rules here, other pairs of shoes. And my next suggestion would be a pair of boots that have a little bit more going on, right? The only pair of boots here right now would be a slip on boot. In this case, my next suggestion would be like a moccasin toe, right? Like a mock toe boot or a Norwegian split toe, like a split toe boot like this. Um, you know, a pair of boots, again, that you can dress up or dress down and not have to worry about it. Like um, the Red Wing mock toe is a great boot, but I wouldn't wear them with a suit. I wouldn't wear these with a suit either, but I would feel more comfortable wearing something like this, right? Like if you just take the upper with something a little bit more not formal, but a little bit more put together, right? Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think about wearing a Red Wing mock toe with anything other than jeans or like a work outfit. Um, but I wouldn't have a problem dressing these up a little bit more, like with a nicer sweater or whatever you want to say, like the shape of them is what matters, but there's a little bit more going on there. So, you know, a, a chunky boot, if you will, but an easy to wear chunky boot. Um, and, you know, if the split toe model isn't really what you're looking for, you know, I think another great suggestion for a pair of, of, of boots in this model would be the Alden Indies, right? Like a pair of indie boots um, or any sort of like moccasin stitch that is, again, easy to wear with a lot of things, easy to dress up and easy to dress down. And I think the indie boot or like a mock like this, because uh, the shape kind of fits the bill. So here we, you know, we just, we just hit six, right? So now we have two boots, four shoes. And because I love boots, uh, this is almost like a must have, in my opinion. I think every, every, you know, this isn't just for like gentlemen, right? Like style in this way, like workwear or anything sartorial is really ambiguous, right? Like man, woman, any gender in, but like any, any identity, right? Any sort of 
way that someone wants to present themselves to the world. Like, it, it doesn't matter what's, what is or isn't in your pants. It matters how you want to present yourself to the world. And that's important. Um, I believe that if anyone is, you know, going down the route of sartorial or like heritage wear, whatever you want to call it, a cap toe boot is a must have. Um, these are from Nathan Florsheim. Uh, again, it's all about texture. It's about color. It's about shape. Um, and these are just really, really easy to wear. So, you know, you have like a moccasin toe stitched boot or a split toe. I think anyone who wants to really kind of like up their style game uh, should absolutely invest in a pair of cap toe boots. So, all right. Now, the last one that, the last boot, right, that I had to think about that I was like, hmm, this is challenging. Do I want it to be a boot? And the answer ultimately was yes. Uh, because I, again, I really like boots. I tend to wear more boots than I tend to wear shoes, but I also live in a pretty cold climate. So, um, you know, for me, take this one with a grain of salt. But if I had to pick a boot that I would feel like could round out really anyone's wardrobe well, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. It's, uh... It's another cap toe boot. <laughs> you know, no surprise. Sorry, I conditioned these recently because they were super dry. Um, but it, it would be another cap toe boot. Just make it a little bit more different than the other one. All uh, right. Well, that's it. Those are my eight suggestions for uh, just enough pairs of footwear, right? Like if I had to bounce between all of these for the rest of my life, I think I could. Not the ones at my feet. But other other shoes, other suggestions, like other other patterns, other thingies that that I like, I, like this model, this would work. I'm I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna, but it would work. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, that's all I got. Till next time. Peace out.